Good morning, everyone, and uh, we'll start today's clinical meeting. Uh, thank you all for joining, and uh, I'd like to invite Nakuta, who's coming in from uh, Medicine 2. She's presenting on Count Me In. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm presenting, uh, I'm Namrita. I'm presenting in today's clinical meeting on behalf of Medicine 2. My presentation is titled Count Me In. Uh, so today I will be describing four cases in brief. Uh, each of these cases, uh, there's one person I saw in OPD, one as an inpatient, one in emergency and one as a consult. And they all have an interesting common feature that I would like to discuss uh, in clinical meeting today. Uh, we can come to the diagnosis of these cases together. And finally, I will describe the common feature that I found in all of them and elaborate on it. So patient one uh, was a 37-year-old engineer from Chennai. He came with a 10-day history of feeling feverish, uh, but no clear recorded temperature, headache with retroorbital pain and myalgias. Uh, there was no history of jaundice, no right hypochondrial pain, no vomiting and no altered sensorium. He was told to have a low platelet count elsewhere about two days ago. And uh, verbally, he said it was about 1,20,000. The hemoglobin done outside was 13 gram per deciliter and no other investigations had been done. Uh, on examination, he was well looking, a pulse rate of uh, 120 uh, beats per minute, regular, and he was dehydrated. There was a blanching rash present over his back. Also, he had these small um, purpuric spots uh, on his uh, on his um, arm and on his torso and on his thighs. And he had these uh, hemorrhagic um, vesicular blisters, like uh, like two of them on his uh, gingival labial uh, area. Now, I looked for an eshkar and I didn't find a clear eshkar. I found this blackish discolored, uh, a slightly black discolored uh, lesion on his right thigh. And he did not have any history typical of working in the outdoors or gardening or going on a trek. So I started him on doxycycline, told him to give in his bloods. He requested that he would not be admitted and he would come back and follow up his bloods with us the next day. Later that night, I went back and checked on his results. And his, he had a total WBC count of 86,600 uh, with a platelet count of 7,000 and hemoglobin of 12.3. Um, so the first thing you think of uh, when you look at this is a, is a leukemia. So we asked for an urgent peripheral smear uh, in the middle of the night and his peripheral smear was reported as 77% uh, pro-myelocytes, 11 blasts, suggestive of an APML, an acute pro-myelocytic uh, le leukemia. So he uh, was called in as an emergency to casualty in the middle of the night, got his platelet transfusions and he was started on chemo that very night. The second patient is a 57-year-old businessman from Jharkhand with three months uh, history of fatigue, significant weight loss, loss of appetite, and one month of cough with production of scanty white sputum. Five-day history of left-sided hemiplegia, no other comorbidities, and he has a 30-pack year smoking history. On examination, he, has fingernail, he had fingernail clubbing. His trachea was shifted to the right with dullness to percussion and increased vocal resonance over the left supraclavicular and dullness to percussion and decreased vocal resonance over the left infraxillary area. He also had a left-sided hemiparesis with an upgoing plantar and hyperreflexia. Um, I will... Uh, any differentials at this point? Uh, I'll just open... Lido. Oops. This is his chest X-ray, by the way. Would anyone like to give any differentials?
Okay, we are looking at differentials that are mainly lung malignancy or TB. One more person disseminated lung malignancy. Okay. Yep. So this is his chest X-ray, and uh, he had a. It was a uh, clinically. It was a lung malignancy in the left upper lobe with uh, metastasis, widespread metastasis. Um, he had multiple mets in the brain with surrounding edema that was causing his left hemiparesis. Now, this gentleman, his count when he came in was 66,300. And over the next three days, progressively in increased to 73,000 and 93,000. He categorically denied any fever. The sputum was uh, scanty, white, consistent uh, um, in, in character over the last month. Uh, we checked for other sources of infection in his urine and uh, he, uh, we checked for TB, all his tuberculosis tests were negative. Um, finally, we did a bone marrow, which showed a markedly hypercellular marrow with myeloid hyperplasia and focal mild plasma cytosis. So any idea why this man would have high elevated counts in the setting of a lung malignancy with no proof of infection and um, a hypercellular marrow? Okay, I'll come to that also when I'm doing the explanation. My third patient is a 55-year-old uh, personal assistant um, from Cartpadi with long-standing bilateral lower limb lymphedema post uh, total penectomy and ilioinguinal lymphadenectomy in 2017. He was a uh, known hypertensive. He came with two-day history of fever and cough and discharge from a new wound on his left lower limb, which... Um, I mean, both the lower limbs had lymphedema, long-standing lymphedema. On examination, his pulse rate was 110, regular. Blood pressures were 100 by 70. Respiratory rate was 26. His chest was clear and he had a wound with purulent discharge over his left lower limb. Now, he presented uh, uh, to hospital on the 7th. He underwent a surgical debridement of this wound on his left lower limb on the 10th. We were called in for a consult after that because he was operated on 10th morning and his counts started going up post-operatively. Uh, 33,900 with 91% neutrophils, 38,000 with 90% neutrophils and on the 12th, 25,700 with 84% neutrophils. This is the point where he had his surgery. No other cell lineage abnormalities. I'll come to the reason why this also happened in my explanation. My last patient is a 55-year-old printing press worker from Gudiatam with poorly controlled diabetes mellitus. He presented with breathless, breathlessness since six hours and left-sided crushing retrosternal pain and sweating since four hours. There was no cough, coryza, um, no productive cough, um, no fever, no lorourinary symptoms or diarrhea. He had history of a Wellen syndrome in 2021 with minor left anterior descending disease and then later an anterolateral wall MI for which he had a left anterior stenting done, uh, anterior descending stenting done in December of last year. On examination, his pulse was 120 per minute, BP was 160 by 80, respiratory rate was 36 per minute. He had an elevated JVP and bi-basal crepitations. This man, um, his ECG shows ST elevations over the uh, anterolateral leads. He had serially increasing CKMB and troponin. Classically, he's had a repeat uh, myocardial infection infarction. He had a count of 20,300 on admission. And again, he had no history of fever or no um, infective foci that we could uh, localize on history or clinical examination. So, leukocytosis. Uh, my point of this is we often see leukocytosis very commonly and the first thought is infection. Um, but that what I want to elaborate on is within a week, we have had at least four patients with leukocytosis that were for reasons other than infection. Right. So uh, a little bit about the physiology of leukocytosis. Uh, the, uh, the other than lymphocytes, everything comes from a CD34 myeloid stem cell. And uh, they, they differentiate upon uh, along two lineages, a myeloblast and a pronormoblast. Um, so the myeloblast, uh, so the from the metamyelocyte is where, uh, this is post-mitotic um, uh, cells from the metamyelocyte bands and neutrophils. So these are the three cells that we see increased in a classical infection or a reactive uh, leukocytosis. That's what we call the left shift. Whereas, uh, important to differentiate that in a leukemia, we will see these three. 
pro myelocytes myeloblasts or myelocytes and in reactive leukocytosis we will see metamyelocytes bands or neutrophils now basophils eosinophils and neutrophils together form the granulocyte uh, part of blood uh, of the blood white blood cells now once released uh, granulocytes live only a few hours in the blood stream uh, from 3 to 11 hours in the peripheral blood stream their total life is 11 to 16 days but most of this life they spend within the bone marrow maturing and gaining their granular function now when they reach the blood stream they can either circulate marginate or migrate so um, uh, once we know this physiology things that can cause leukocytosis are anything that increases bone marrow production decreases peripheral destruction or causes decreased migration or increase or decreased margination all of this will cause increased neutrophilia circulating neutrophilia that is picked up uh, when we test for it in the blood pool so what is the difference between a leukemoid reaction and a leukemia a leukemoid reaction um leukemoid reactions are reactive neutrophilia or uh, lymphocytosis that we classically see in infections and many other causes that i will come to uh in that you see the post mitotic or band forms the three lower forms that i showed you in the slide before um and classically they have toxic granules or dole dole bodies whereas in leukemia you see the precursor three forms um and uh, so they are immature forms now the uh, a test that we can use on a peripheral smear to differentiate between this is leukocyte alkaline phosphatase uh it is to differentiate a benign left shift from a cml uh so there is a chemical which is uh, hydrolyzed by the alkaline phosphatase of a wbc into phosphate and it's uh, daughter chemical um and uh, on on 400 a score of 20 to 100 is normal higher scores indicate a leukemoid reaction because mature cells have more granules and more granules means more of this chemical is hydrolyzed so a higher look lap score indicates that the cells are mature and likely it's a leukemoid reaction or a left shift not a cml or a leukemia um now non infectious causes of leukocytosis uh, chronic inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis stills ibd vasculitis granulomatous diseases all of them have um, increased levels of cytokines that increase myelopoiesis in the bone marrow um and uh, but usually these count increases are more modest around the range of 15 to 20, within 15 to 20000 and mature neutrophils are depleted over time post splenectomy because of decreased destruction you can have increased counts in hemolytic anemias and itps you can have a spillover uh, increase in wbcs chronic smoking causes neutrophilia stress induced neutrophilia like emotional uh, emotional stress exercise surgery etc so the gentleman uh, that we talked about with the lymphedema had just had surgery and his counts went up immediately after that even though he was on appropriate antibiotic cover uh now this uh is because of catecholamine induced demargination of wbc neutrophils from the margin of the blood cell uh, classically this is blocked by propranolol in all cases except exercise induced uh, neutrophilia which is because of neutrophils that are redistributed into circulation from lungs amrita can you just you'll have about oh, 30 sure. seconds otherwise yeah. um myocardial infarctions steroid uh, lithium now the gentleman we talked about with the disseminated lung malignancy he had a paraneoplastic gram csf secretion from the lung tumor and that's why his counts were so high um so that is ectopic gram csf secretion secondary spread to the bone marrow and recovery of the marrow after chemotherapy there are many more causes familial causes uh, which are far less common that i won't elaborate and finally leukemia so the 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 gist is that if you if you have a leukocytosis and clinically you don't uh, have um, a suspicion of in, infection is not high on your list then you should do a peripheral smear and if required a marrow and look for alternative causes of leukocytosis not all high bl white blood cell counts are indicative of infection thank you any questions we can have time for one question you said your person with lung malignancy had high gm csf you have proved it or it's a theory saying that uh, it's we we have not proved it there is there are reports of lung malignancies having uh, high counts without when infection and the bone marrow is shown to be hypercellular so one of the theories for that is increased gm csf production yes. by the tumor itself by the tumor you are proposing for your patient yes
Thanks, Ramrita. Thank you. In the interest of time, uh, thank you. I'll ask uh, Janvi to present next. I think she's been waiting. All. We'll try and keep it to 10 minutes just so that to allow questions and uh, so that everybody presents. Otherwise, someone's hard work will go to waste. While Janvi is getting ready, can we ask Ramrita, what is your cutoff when you say leukemoid versus, you know, just looking at the total count, what count would you be with? Leukemoid uh, actually can even be 50,000 to 1 million. Generally, uh, in practice, we use towards uh, 80,000 and above for leukemia. But it's not that leukemoid cannot be leukemia. Good morning. 